All right, so today I want to give you an update on my triple het project. I actually have three females and a male that are het for albino, pied, and clown. And I would say those three genes are probably the most sought after genes in all of ball pythons as far as recessives. So when I breathe those together, I'll get albino pieds, albino clowns, clown pieds, and a whole bunch of really crazy combinations. And they're about a one year old now. So what I want to do today is I want to go in and pull them out and get a weight on them and kind of show them off a little bit. You can see that their color is a little bit brighter than a normal and their pattern is quite a bit more jumbled up which is kind of interesting sometimes you never know what you're gonna get I'm pretty sure they're the only triple head albino pied clowns that I've ever seen there there's none of them on morph market it could be a world's first I've never seen them although some people have collections so big you never know if you actually you know hit the world's first some people may have actually produced. I would think that someone had produced you know the triple head albino pied clowns it's a pretty exciting project as a matter of fact if I breathe those together and get the triple visual, a visual albino pied clown, I'm thinking of taking that, maybe breeding it to a desert ghost and getting the quadruple hats, which would be pretty awesome. It's, it's almost like, you know, like an Easter egg project because those snakes look pretty much like normals. And then when you breed them and hatch out the eggs, you get a whole rainbow of all these really awesome, pretty high end snakes too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull those snakes out of my rack and let's get a weight on them and check them out. All right, so here is Savage. Take a look at this big old girl. I can't believe this girl is only one year old. Pretty amazing for a one year old. And so for some reason, it seems like all these triple heads are just really eating really well. I have a lot of other snakes in my collection. I have my Banana Inchy Clown, which I bought. Is uh, I think it's a little bit older. As a matter of fact, I bought him on Morph Market, and he is kind of up against the wall and just refuses to eat, will not eat. And these guys have almost never refused the food. I've been feeding them quite a bit and they're already up on small rats pretty you know like a rat about the size of the belly here and look at just the kind of the pattern on there it looks quite a bit different from a normal you can see kind of the normal alien heads on the sides and look at how big and chunky she is it's pretty amazing and kind of the thing that I find interesting with all these triple heads is if you look at the belly they really don't have the head pied markers down the bottom usually they have like almost looks like someone took a sharpie and drew a line like right from the vent up to about here like black lines on either side of the vent and you really don't see those on these triple heads and I've actually seen some people that said uh, you know a head clown marker sometimes uh, they, I haven't actually seen this on any of my head clowns but some people say that you have a line from the vent to the end of the tail underneath for a head clown marker which I don't know if that's accurate or if it's just you know one guy just produced some head clowns and they all happen to have that line but it looks like, you know, as far as the, you know, the kind of the visual appearance looks pretty much like a normal, not much different than a normal. And the pattern looks, I'd say, if you handed me the snake, I'd say, yep, that looks like a normal. If you actually didn't know the breeding, you probably wouldn't know at all that these were triple head kind of sleeper genes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a weight on this girl. She's getting really big. She might be, let's see where she's at. She's up to 873.5 grams, 800. 73 that is pretty amazing she is getting some really good weight to her all right, so here is Rusty. Rusty is the male triple head. And look, he looks pretty much like a normal ball python. Not much different. As a matter of fact, I thought they were a little bit brighter at first when they first hatched out. And it seems like as they age and mature, they're looking more and more pretty much as far as like a normal color. And you can see the pattern is a little bit more jumbled up, but not too far out of the realm as far as just a, you know, a unique pattern normal. It's pretty amazing. I didn't really know what to expect on these triple heads. If you look at the the belly on this one a little bit of checkering kind of down the sides which is kind of interesting on either side of the belly not really like true I guess I guess it's close to like a crazy head pied marker I guess you can kind of consider that kind of like a head pied pseudo head pied marker on either side of the belly but as far as the color and the pattern you know they, they pretty much have browned out quite a bit to where they look pretty normal as far as their appearance and this one they've all been eating really well this one kind of kind of got stubborn for maybe a month and then went back on food for just a little bit so let's take a look on this guy he's probably a little bit lighter than the other ones just because he kind of got stubborn there for a bit he's at 674.6 grams 
All right, so take a look at this one. This one we named Lucky. Lucky is another female triple head looking pretty much like a normal ball python. She's starting to get a little bit squirrely and starting to take off. I kind of want to look at all of their bellies just to see the difference that we can see between all the different bellies. It looks like it's kind of interesting. They have the, almost like it's like a pseudo, like a broken head pied on either side of the belly. Maybe you can definitely see the, the head pied on these kind of breaking through a little bit. I didn't even realize at first, but I think you can see a little bit right on the belly. And as far as the, the pattern and the color, pretty much completely normal. This girl's been eating really good too. Some, some weeks these snakes have been eating like two or three meals, depending on kind of what I have available in my rack. Sometimes if I have too many mice, I'll feed them, you know, a bunch of smaller mice kind of in a row. I kind of go back and forth between the mice and the rats. I never really feed these guys live. I've been always doing like the you know the fresh kill of the frozen top. This guy's a little bit head shy, kind of jumpy, not really used to being handled much. So all I want to do is get a weight on this girl and see how much Lucky weighs. She's coming in at 733.7 grams. Pretty good. All right, so take a look at this. This is pretty interesting. This one is a lot brighter than the other ones. Really super, like it has like something else in it. And I started looking, kind of looking at what was going on as far as this one. I didn't really realize this before. It looks like it has maybe a little bit of flaming coming up right there on the side. I wonder if this might have some yellow belly in it or something. And sometimes the yellow belly can be kind of tricky because there's a lot of genes that really look like yellow belly. There's the yellow belly, the gravel, the asphalt, the spark, and all those kind of yellow belly complex genes that can all kind of have a similar appearance to yellow belly. But I'm thinking there might be something in here, just kind of comparing them side by side, which I didn't even, didn't even realize before. They all seemed really super bright like this when they were young. The other three kind of browned out, and this one seemed like it, uh, like it uh, seems like it really has something else in the mix, which is kind of crazy. One thing about yellow belly you want to kind of avoid is that if you hit the super yellow belly, especially in this project, this could be a real bummer because if I hit the ivory, I could potentially have like a triple visual albino pied clown. And then if I hit the ivory, I would end up with like a $300 ivory instead of a, like a $3,000 albino pied clown. So that could really kill the project. If I actually ended up with you know the, like the ivories or the yellow bellies in the project. Sometimes you want the yellow bellies and sometimes you don't. This guy is like super head shy too. Crazy kind of snakes. Alright so I want to get a weight on this girl. See what she is coming in at. She's pretty hefty. She's coming in at 702.7 grams. Pretty awesome. So take a look at this. This is one of the possible combinations breeding those normal looking snakes together. Isn't that amazing? They can produce something like this from those normal looking snakes. This is, believe it or not, this is the father. And I bred this to a clown to get those triple heads. So this is the combination of the pied, which brings in all the white color. And it's a combination of the albino, the albino pied. And this guy, I was just kind of curious about how much this guy weighs. He's been fasting for a long time. Just took a few rats here lately but you know he's a male so it doesn't really matter he is 1503 grams so take a look at this beast of a snake. This is a big albino female. This is another possibility breeding those normal looking triple heads together. So you get albinos and you'll get albino pides. This girl, she's actually, she's had I think two years off now and she just finally started eating on a regular basis. As a matter of fact, I might breed her this year. She's getting pretty big and hefty. And it's funny with these ball pythons, sometimes they can get really picky and hardly eat anything all year and then it's just within a matter of a couple months if they go back on food they can gain weight super fast it's pretty amazing and it seems like if they fast for a long time they don't really lose that much weight i'm just going to get a weight on this girl and see what she's coming in at. she is really big she's coming in at 2706 grams she's a big girl 
All right, so take a look at this, drooling over this girl. <laughs> this is this is probably one of the most beautiful pides I've ever seen. As a matter of fact, this girl, she might be laying some eggs here pretty soon. I did an ultrasound. It looked like her follicles were about 32 millimeters. I'm thinking maybe in the next few weeks she might lay some eggs. I wanted to get a weight on her before she lays. So this pied is another uh, possibility that you get from breeding those together. So you get pieds, clowns, a bunch of pied clowns, a bunch of stuff. I'm actually gonna get a weight on this girl, see what she's coming in at. She is really super big. She's coming in at 3,076 grams, pretty massive. All right, so here is the female that produced that clutch. This is a clown, so we'll get clowns coming out of those snakes as well, which is pretty awesome. This is just a straight clown, no other genes. This is just a recessive, one of the most, I say this is probably the king of combos when it comes to recessives. I say it doesn't really look that impressive as just a standalone gene. It looks kind of interesting, but when you work other genes into the clown, you can make some of the most breathtaking combinations and some of the kind of the goofiest looking snakes sometimes when you work stuff into the clown and this girl she's been back on food with the vengeance she she pretty much fasted for months after she laid those eggs and was really stubborn and it seems like just recently here in the last couple months all my snakes have been back on food i think i want to be able to breed a lot of these this girl is 2116 grams pretty amazing when i bred her that first year she was two years old and she weighed i think she weighed uh, she's about uh, almost like 1,450 grams, kind of like right on the edge of the minimum requirements for 1,500 grams. And I took a chance with that albino pie, and to my amazement, she laid six beautiful eggs, and that's where I got those triple heads. Pretty amazing. All right, so there you have it. That is an update on my triple head project. Pretty awesome. As a matter of fact, I actually went over to the World of All Pythons, used their genetic calculator, figured out the odds of breeding two triple heads together, and believe it or not, my odds are 1 in 64, which is really slim odds to hit the visual albino pied clown. So if you just held that one female to, to actually hit those odds and get a triple visual, it would take you an average of 10 years with, you know, six egg clutches, which is kind of crazy. And that's why I held back three females. Kind of reduces my time to, you know, get the triple visual to about, I'd say, maybe three to four years to hit the albino pie clown visual. And if I actually take the triple visual and breed it to a desert ghost and get the quadruples, let me tell you, to actually get a quadruple visual, that'll take me probably the rest of my life to hit that combination. Pretty crazy. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.